Welcome back nerds! We got the essentials out of the way in the last video. Today we are going to be making this look more like Mario. We're going to be adding some range to our movement so it's not just focused on one screen. We are going to add a HUD to keep our score and to gain that score we're going to add some enemies, more specifically Goombas and Troopas. If you're just joining us for the first time and you get lost, make sure you check out our first video. It'll catch you up on everything we've done so far. Otherwise, let's get to it. Since we're going to be going outside of the original layout, we're going to start out with zooming out so we can see more. And then we're going to click on our ground and pull it out further. Now that the ground goes outside of our scene, we're going to need a way to keep the camera on our Mario object. So we're going to double click on our Mario, go into behaviors, add a behavior. We're going to search for a new behavior and we're going to type in camera and we'll go ahead and install the camera, which adds two new camera behaviors and then we'll choose the smooth platformer camera. And since this is a smooth camera, it means it slowly catches back up to your character. And we're gonna edit that by changing the catch up speed. And three is going to keep it pretty much directly on top of us. And for now, that's what we're gonna use. And we can see in a quick preview that our character now runs and is followed by the camera until we make it all the way to the edge. Next up, we get to build our HUD, which keeps track of all of our stats at the top of the screen. And we're gonna focus on the images first which is going to be the star, the secondary item container, and the little coin. So let's take a minute to dry off those three items real quick. And once the drawings are done, we'll go ahead and add them into GDevelop as object sprites. And since this was covered in the last video, we'll use a little bit of editing magic and jump ahead. So now we have our three new objects and we're going to go ahead and drag them out to about where they should be on our screen. And to ensure these bad boys don't move, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And the idea is this one won't have a camera that moves. And you can do a new layer by clicking on add new layer on the bottom. And if you don't have that option, you can click up top on the icon open layers panel. And now whenever there's an object that we don't want to move, we'll just go ahead and click on that object and change the layer from base layer to our new layer. And of course, we'll do that on our three new objects. And now when we preview, we can see our character running along and the HUD stays perfectly still. And for the last thing we're adding to our HUD at the moment, we're going to go ahead and throw up a text object. So go to add a new object, select on text, and we'll change the size to 16. And if you want your font to look more like Mario's, you can actually just go ahead and download a Super Mario World font and install it. And then when you hit choose file, you can find Super Mario World and you can run that font. And for the initial display, we're gonna go ahead and put in six zeros because our score is gonna start at zero. And we can go ahead and drag that out and that goes right beneath the coins. Alrighty, our board is all set up and it is time to make our Goombas, which are nowadays referred to as Galoombas. The Super Mario World Goombas act a little different than the normal ones, whereas we don't actually squish them when we jump on their head. They flip upside down and then they become interactable where we can kick them forward and grab them. And then the Troopa, which will be our walking turtles. And when we jump on those, we will pop them out of their shell and it will leave the shell behind for us to interact with as well. At this point, we're gonna keep the Goombas super basic. We'll have it so when we jump on their heads, they will flip upside down and no longer interact with Mario. And that'll leave them set up for later videos when we'll be able to kick as well as grab them. And then the Koopas, we will knock them out of their shell, which means we'll need to create both the beach Koopa and the shell. And then we'll set the shell up so that when we walk into it, it'll get kicked in the direction that we hit it, killing enemies that it bumps into. And we're going to be starting out with the Goomba since it'll be easier. And for this, we'll just need two different images, one with his feet together and one with them spread out. And this will make him run as well as we can use the one with his feet together and use GDevelop features in order to flip them upside down. And now that we have our images done, we can go ahead and load those in as new object sprites. And we're going to want to add loop to this animation. We'll set the speed to 
And let's go ahead and set that animation to walk and the object name itself to Goomba. And now we can add a second animation and this will just be the idle animation. And we'll use this when we flip them upside down. Our Goombas are now raring and ready to go. So we're going to drag one onto our map and then we're going to give it the ability to move by using the platformer behavior, but turning off default conditions. That way the player does not affect the movement. And also we're going to slow down the speed to 64 pixels. Next, in order to make the Goomba move, we're going to use the code editor and setting up a condition that's blank for now. And this just means it's always going to be active. And then we're going to simulate platformer control and we're going to simulate the left key being pressed. And this is just going to make the Goomba walk left. And we can hop back into our scene and preview this. And we can see the Goomba walks right on through us and continues off the edge. And looking up at our score, it seems a little off. And that's because we never locked it down to the HUD layer. So we can go ahead and fix that by setting it to the HUD. Next, we're going to bring the speed and jump power of our Mario down to size. So we'll go into the behaviors and bring the jump speed down to 320 and the move speed to 160. Next, we need to implement interacting with the enemies. And on the most basic level, if Mario touches the enemy, it hurts him. So an on collision event with Mario colliding with Goomba. And for now, the action will be delete Mario. But wait, Mario doesn't always die when he touches the enemy. If you jump on a Goomba, you should be able to kill the Goomba. So in this collision event, we need to break it down into two sub events. One being if Mario is landing on the Goomba and the other being if Mario is not landing on the Goomba. This way, if you're jumping on top of the Goomba, you can kill them. But if you're not, they kill you. So we'll right click the event for the collision and we're going to add a sub event. And in this sub event, if Mario is falling, we're going to delete the Goomba. And then we can copy paste this and right click the second Mario is falling and invert that, meaning Mario is not falling. And that's where we'll delete Mario. And now that we can kill Goombas, we're going to need to update the score. So let's head back to our scene. And first we'll update our new text name. And I'm going to call it HUD points. Next, we'll add a new text object which we'll name points. We'll pull in the Super Mario text and we'll set the size to eight pixels. And this object is gonna need a variable and this will be a number variable and I'm gonna set it to the name move to position. And back in our event sheet, under the condition where we kill the Goomba, we're gonna add a new action for create object points. And we're gonna do this at position Goomba.x and Goomba.y and these are case sensitive. Now that we create our text, we'll need to set the value. And we'll do that by taking our points object and modifying the text. And we're just going to set it to a constant of 200 for now. Next, we're going to take our points object and move it upwards. Because every time points spawn in the game, they scroll up a little bit before they disappear. And we're going to do that by setting the value that we created on points, which was move to position. And we're going to set that to points.y minus 12 which is 12 pixels above where our points object is. And then we're gonna select points again and we're going to use force. And we're gonna do that at an angle of 270, which is upwards and 32 pixels. And we want that to be permanent. Now we're gonna create a new event and we're gonna compare where our points Y position is. And if that points Y position is less than or equal to the variable of move to position. In other words, if it's moved up those 12 pixels, we're gonna delete it. Now that we gain points, we're going to have to update our HUD points. So let's double click our points and add a variable. We'll name that total points. And now each time we add 200 points, we're also going to add to the total points variable under HUD points. And in order to see this change, we'll need to modify the text by setting it to our new value. But this is going to break the format by removing our leading zeros. So we're going to need an algorithm in order to put the correct amount of zeros before our variable. And to fix this, we're going to want to change our set text from this to this. And I'll explain why. So we're going to start off explaining the substring. This takes in a string and two numbers. Our string is going to be the six zeros. And then the first number is going to be our starting position, which is zero based. 
and the last number is going to be how many numbers to count. So if we just had 0 and 6 here, we would start at this position and we would include 6 values, which would be all 6 of these zeros. So when I'm taking in a score of 200, we want to be taking from spot 0 and we only want 3 numbers since the last 3 numbers will be filled with the 200 value. And in order to find this, we're going to use 6 minus, and then we'll use the function stringly. But since this requires a string and then needs to return a number, we're first going to have to set the whole thing to a number, and then set what we're dealing with to a string. And then we'll grab the length of our 200, which will be 3, and then return that as a number. So we can do 6 minus 3, and that means we'll get 3 zeros, and then we fill it in with this last part, which is just our total points variable amount, which is 200. And in the end, that gives us 0, 0, 0, 200. Enough math, back to the Goomba. We're going to hop in, give him a variable. It's going to be a Boolean, and we'll call it is flipped. We can apply that and then go into our events. And then instead of making him walk all the time, we're only going to make the Goomba walk if the variable is flipped is set to false. And then we're also going to check again on the collision with the Goomba and again make sure is flipped is set to false. Then when we land on the Goomba, instead of killing them, we're going to set the boolean is flipped to true. So that means we need to remove the delete Goomba. And then we're also going to rotate the Goomba 180 degrees and set his animation to idle. And technically the Goomba has a small collision box that's larger than his image. So we can just drop this by one pixel and this will make sure he lands on his head. And with that mechanic completed, we are done with our Goombas and can move on to our Troopa. We'll go ahead and set the Koopas in the same way we made the Goombas. Make sure the speed's on 0.24 and check the loop box. And in the same fashion, we have the is flipped Boolean. We're gonna set the Koopas up to have an is shell Boolean. And in order for them to move, the shell has to be false. And if you're having trouble finding simulate control, make sure you added the character platformer behavior. And as a reminder, we are doing default controls unselected, as well as a 64 pixel movement speed. Now I'll go ahead and add a new animation to the Koopa, and I'll name this one shell, and rename our first one to run, that way we can find it later. And now I can create an event where on collision with the Koopa. If I'm falling, the Koopa will go into shell, just like the Goomba did flip. And if I'm not falling, then Mario will be deleted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is where we're going to have to end our video today. We will add the Beach Koopa as well as kicking the turtle shells in the next video, along with a multi-tier layered background. And we'll also be adding combo points for bouncing on multiple enemies or turtle shelling multiple enemies. If you bumped into any questions that you couldn't figure out, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Also, if you're looking forward to the next episode, make sure you hit that notification bell. That'll let you know the moment it comes out. Otherwise, peace.